Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, I've called this conference because uh, I've just heard that uh, Mr. Morrison has decided to preference my party last on pretty much all his tickets. <clears throat> now, I can't believe that um, the leader of what is supposedly a conservative party would put uh, would preference a, a Christian conservative party, which is what I uh, what I lead, behind the toxic mix of the Labor and the Greens. Uh, I espouse all the views of Robert Menzies, pretty much, um, being a Christian conservative, and he's the leader of the party that uh, Robert Menzies started, preferencing me last behind uh, the Communist Socialist uh, Alliance of the, the Greens and the Labor Party. <clears throat> I'm not sure why he's done it. Uh, I know that I brought a bill into Parliament a couple of months ago uh, that would have given the Australian people a say in who comes to this country, not just how many people, but who comes to this country. They were very upset about that. Uh, it's terrible when uh, a government is very upset that the Australian people may have a say in how their country is run and who their neighbours are going to be. Now, <coughs> the, uh, the hypocrisy of the whole thing is uh, I stand against Muslim immigration because I believe it's, a, it's the greatest threat to Australia and to our way of life uh, that we face right now. Uh, as we've seen in uh, Sydney, Melbourne, and even now in Brisbane, uh, what's happening when you bring these people in, they do not integrate. They're a parallel society, and, uh, and it, it's not good for our, for our citizens. And uh, a lot of uh, people agree with me on that. So I've, I've asked that uh, we have a plebiscite so the Australian people can have a say on who comes here. Um, <coughs> the hypocrisy is also that uh, Mr Morrison has said that the same thing, pretty much that I say, that it's a danger to us. Uh, Muslim immigration is a danger. And he's reinforced that by uh, funding the uh, AFP and the ASIO to the tune of $570 million. And by the way, they do a great job. Uh, they're they're, just, they're um, finding these people before they commit these crimes. There's, there's a lot of these uh, terrorist acts that would have uh, gone ahead, except that those people are doing such a great job. So I'm happy that they get more funding, but what it's saying to us is, if you're going to keep on funding uh, these people, uh, the ASIO and the AFP, for more and more money, uh, and they keep on bringing the same people in who are committing these crimes, we're either going to run out of uh, money or we're going to run out of uh, police officers. So he's also said that the uh, uh, people on Terror Watch have has gone up eightfold in the last five years. So uh, he's admitting that we have a problem and yet he doesn't want to let the Australian people have a say in uh, whether we should bring more of them back into the country. He's also uh, funding the uh, Palestinian Authority and he's also funding uh, the Pakistanis who have suicide bombers who kill innocent Indians and the Palestinian Authority who pay people and uh, they go in and kill innocent Israelis. Uh, I'm dead against that and I don't think the Australian dollars should be going to pay for that. So uh, I'm just appalled that uh, that's the way he stands, that uh, he thinks that he'd rather a Green Labor Alliance above a Christian Conservative Party. So uh, I'm happy to uh, take any questions if you've got some. What do you think about the reaction? What do you think about what happened today at Cronulla, where um, a man assaulted a photographer um, and intimidated a journalist? Yeah, well, uh, it was after I, I heard about it. I didn't see it. Uh, I'd left the area by that time. Uh, I've heard about it since. I don't know what the uh, uh, lead up to it was, so I can't really comment. He's been charged <coughs> by the police with assault and intimidation. Do you condemn his actions? Absolutely, I condemn any violence. I've always, I've never advocated for any violence of any sort to anyone uh, and I'll continue to do that and all, and all my members would continue to do that. So what happens with other people I can't really comment on, I'm afraid. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't there at the time. This is the second time though we've had a phrase running press conference where there has been a uh, physical, physical altercation. Oh you mean when I got attacked? I also mean in this instance and yes at that press conference. Why does it seem to be continually happening at well, press conferences? Some people are crazy I guess they they want to attack people if they don't agree with their views. I can't speak for those people. Uh, as I said, I've never advocated for any violence at all. This man was one of your supporters. Do you take any responsibility for what he's done here? Uh, well, one, I don't know if he's a supporter or not. On his Facebook page, he has, and I quote, I support Fraser Anning. Do you take any responsibility for his actions uh, here? Pretty hard to take responsibility for somebody's actions. 
Um, people do silly things from all walks of life and uh, as I said I don't advocate uh, any violence. I definitely never promote any violence on my Facebook page. He's allegedly followed a female journalist away from your press conference into a car park. Is this guy a coward? Is he essentially threatening someone for, for asking you questions for, for doing their job? Uh, as I said, I, I wasn't there, so I don't know what, what went down or what led up to it, but um, I have uh, no knowledge of those things, but as I say, I, I don't advocate for anything. If he's a member of your party, will you have him kicked out of the party? Uh, if he's been, uh, if he's done something wrong, and I don't know what he's done uh, and what led up to it, but certainly if he's uh, attacked somebody without provocation, certainly I would. Are you what suggesting kind of provocation do you think would be acceptable for an assault of this man? Well, somebody who who hits somebody, I guess, is if if he was hit first, I guess uh, you know he has a right to protect himself like anyone does. If he's just assaulted somebody, then obviously he wouldn't be welcome in my party. Uh, earlier today on Twitter, you said that you supported a, a ban on black immigration. Would that include the likes of Archbishop Desmond Tutu or Oprah Winfrey? Uh, I don't remember doing that Twitter, but um, I've never had a white Australia policy. I have a uh, one of my um, Senate candidates is actually uh, an Indian, and he calls himself black. I think he's just brown. But uh, I, we don't have any colour chart in my in my office, and I've never had a. Uh, white Australia policy and I certainly wouldn't preclude anyone who comes to this country and assimilates and doesn't want to attack us, uh, I'd love to have them here and especially if they are not on the dole and they actually work for a living. What would you say to people who are supporters of yourself and your party who are heading to press conferences or events that you may be at with the intention of physically assaulting anyone else there or a journalist? Certainly don't do it. I, I would never want any of my supporters to be assaulting anyone um, if, uh, if there are people like that. And look, there's crazy people in all walks of life, uh, both conservative and left wing. And we've seen what Antifa does and, uh, and some of the loony left that uh, come to our uh, different uh, <coughs> media conferences, attacking people, attacking police, spitting on people. Uh, most of the Conservatives don't do that, they're, they're usually more Conservative. I can't tell of any other press conference during this election campaign though where there's been a physical assault like this. I have, I, I've seen them, I have seen them on numerous occasions. In Go this campaign? The, but, in this campaign? Well, in the, the one at uh, wherever it was in Melbourne that time, there's about 500 lunatics with their banners on, their masks on, attacking police and uh, they needed two or three hundred police to protect uh, the decent citizens who are where I was, who were talking about uh, the problem with the Sudanese gangs who are bashing people in Melbourne. So this is a press conference, this isn't a public event, this is a press conference. Mm -hmm. So your point is? There's a differentiation there, this isn't a public event that people are being invited to, this mm -hmm. is a press conference that is being held for the purposes yeah, there of were, there, Nothing happened at my press yesterday. conference. I was at a press conference, we finished the press conference, I left, and apparently there was an altercation. I didn't see it, I don't know what led up to it. But I condemn any violence against anyone. Are you concerned this sort of person is one of your supporters? Well, look, you know, there's supporters uh, for all sorts of parties that uh, may have different views to mine. You know, so, uh, you know, the left wing supporters are, are violent, much more violent than any of the supporters that I've seen in our party. But as I say, I condemn any, uh, any violence any time. Senator, your, your Twitter account says, my party will ban all Muslim and black immigration and ensure safety for Australians once more. I think you meant stand that, by those I'd comments? say it'd be black Sudanese. The, the Sudanese are in gangs in Melbourne now attacking people on a daily basis. Not very much reporting, by the way, from your <coughs> left wing media. But uh, there are a lot of people who are being hurt badly by these people. You know, old people who are being robbed and bashed. Uh, homes that are being broken into, I've, I've met quite a lot of those people. This is a serious concern. I know that the media don't want to say who's doing all these things, but the fact is that black African gangs are doing a lot of damage in this country. We're having, we've had eight attacks in Brisbane in the last three months. Did you report any of those? I'm sure you didn't. But the fact is that I have the police reports and there's elderly people, there's knife attacks, and we need to talk about it. If we don't talk about it, we're well, just gonna keep ignoring it until it's a, a problem like we have in Melbourne. We have white flight out of Sydney and Melbourne. But that, that is a racial test yeah. for immigration that you're proposing? But absolutely, for those people, absolutely. What do you mean, those the, people? The Sudanese, the black Sudanese. They're black in colour and they're Sudanese and they shouldn't be coming into this country 
because they don't fit in and they attack us and they go on the dole. Do you and accept that statement as racist to, to call out a specific race and say they're not welcome absolutely. in this country? Absolutely. So, so it is racist? That race, absolutely. So, so you accept that you're being racist? By no, court. I don't accept that I'm racist. I'm being a pragmatist. I believe that we should be bringing people into this country to assimilate. And I don't care what colour they are, by the way. But those particular people do not assimilate. They live in their enclaves. They're a parallel society and they attack us. Now, if you want your mother or your father or your uncle or your auntie attacked, and just because they haven't been so far, but most people change their opinion when it happens. Isn't that strange that we bring them in, we love you, but now as soon as they get attacked, all of a sudden it's a different thing. And we're seeing that in Victoria now, by the way, because they're going into the leafy suburbs that were always uh, sacrosanct and no one was ever gonna get attacked there, but these guys are going into those suburbs and attacking those people, and they're now getting up, uh, worried about their life. But thank you very much for that. I'd, uh, I really appreciate you coming here. Thank you.